now it's time to move on to mixing the uh, silicon rubber. As you can see, I've got my lab coat on. And I'm going to take this five gallon bucket of silicon. And I'm down to the last bit, actually. That's why I'm doing it this way. Normally I scoop this stuff out. Now that I've got the silicon poured, I'm going to have to let it set on this level surface. Pace level your table. That way I can determine exactly how much silicon I have. It looks to be around about 32. But I'll let it sit for a little while. And then I'll know for sure. Yes, that determines exactly how much uh, of this uh, catalyst I'm going to be putting in there. This is a two-part system, but they're not equal parts. It's ten parts to one part. Uh, the particular silicone I use is a GT1000 made by Circle K Products. Uh, it's a very rigid silicone. Uh, it's good for undercuts and stuff. And it doesn't distort easy. Um, it turns out blue. I, I think you've seen it in pink before. This turns out blue. Um, I like it. I use it exclusively. Um, well, it looks like it's just about 32 ounces. So that's going to give us, since it's a 10 to 1 portion, that's going to give us uh, 3.2 ounces of catalyst. Always shape this stuff before you use it. The reason being is that <coughs> This blue stuff you see is just a coloring. The catalyst itself needs to mix in with it. Now I go just a little bit over three and a quarter <coughs> because I don't care how much you shake and dance. There's always a little left for your... Oh, it sticks at the bottom. So I just go a little bit over. Pour this in, you gotta mix this really, really good. You don't want to end up with soft spots. And even though this is blue, it's not a dark enough blue. Where sometimes you don't make those mistakes. I have actually ruined uh, molds that way. <coughs> not mixing it good enough. Get as much as I can into there. I'll still be, there'll still be about 0.2 ounces left at the bottom of this cup. Turn it back over. Well, I finished, it took me about 10-15 minutes to mix. Now, most people don't do this, but I vacuum all my forms, all my silicone. You can see it gets pretty huge. Here. And the reason for this is that I, I cast under pressure to keep the air bubbles, to crush the air bubbles, make nice clean castings with high detail. You can't, you cannot make a rubber mold without vacuuming it and then put it into a, a, a pressure chamber. Because what you're going to end up with is every little bubble, as you can see, there's quite a bit of air in there. Every little bit of air that's left in that mold will create tiny bubbles. And under pressure, those bubbles will all crush and they'll distort your casting. They'll distort it and disfigure it. So what I do is I, I just vacuum the main batch until it stops rising like that. And then I start to pour. Normally I'll put in some, uh, cut up pieces of uh, silicone so as not to waste old molds and uh, not to use a lot of the new stuff and uh, 
you know, kind of conserve your materials, waste not, want not again. Uh, but this is the end of the, the, the five gallon bucket and it's kind of stiff. And it's been my experience that when you're using that last part of the, the rover, it becomes so viscous it's very easy for air bubbles to get trapped around this stuff. So I'm not using those. Um, it's kind of wasteful, but not really. I, the alternative is having a, ba a bad mold, and I don't want a bad mold. So I start out slowly because even though I'm vacuuming this, I want to try and not get any air bubbles in here as I'm pouring. Um, that the vacuum chamber does for you when you vacuum the whole pot prior to uh, pouring a mold is uh, it when you put this inside the chamber it's not going to it'll expand twice the size of it, is it, as it uh, as the volume it fills and if that, if that is, if that hadn't been vacuumed prior to this pour, when that happens, you're going to have to have, you're going to have to have a mold that bit tall, twice this size, just so that you know you won't end up with silicon spilling all over the place. And it's very difficult to pour down a mold like that, so I, I vacuum it ahead of time. is usually enough, but because of the viscosity of this older stuff, I wanted to make sure I got all the air bubbles out, so I kept them in for an hour. Uh, you'll notice there's three molds instead of uh, two, because uh, even though I showed you showed me, showed you starting out with three or two, I always make a, a, what's called a, an extra mold in case my calculations are wrong and I ended up having to pour some of the excess. It's better not to waste the silicon because it is expensive. So I had to pour the excess into this one. Didn't quite make it all the way, but it, uh, at least I didn't waste the silicon. Um, these will sit on this level surface overnight and I'll break them out tomorrow and do a casting in them. I'll make about three different masters and store those away. And uh, when I get some more material, I'll, I'll make some additional molds from them. 24 hours is not really past, but these molds are pretty much uh, nice and set. But now we cut. You're going to need a long knife. I mean, this is my, my long knife. Because uh, you never know what thickness of mold you're going to deal with. And it's going to have to be sharp, too. So I find just a little bit of mineral oil on your knife. Makes it easier to cut. I can see my line right there. And I'm going to cut to it. I'm going to have to cut between the legs here so that I can 
even the casting won't come out that easy. <laughs>